What's going on guys, it's Adonis. Dragon Ball Super episode 75 just aired. Some really dope stuff, let's talk about it. Now this episode was completely focused around Goku trying to get somebody to spar with him. And some really cool moments actually happen starting with Gohan. Now when we start to see Gohan fight against Goku as great Saiyan man, I was like, yo, this is actually really dope. And low key, obviously Goku wasn't going 100%, but base form so far at whatever, you know, Goku was setting his power level at, Gohan was actually doing some doing some really nice stuff. I'm just saying, just a little bit. And I thought that was a dope sequence, just going Super Saiyan, fighting against Gohan as an adult. Training sequence was really sick. Um, obviously, Gohan is nowhere near Goku as far as ability, um, and they showcased that a little bit as well. And that was just the beginning. I felt like everything shifted when he went to go see Krillin. Now, this moment was actually way more impactful than I had expected it to be. So Krillin's on the beat. He's being a police officer. He actually tries to protect an officer and actually gets shot, and the bullet actually cuts him to really showcase where Krillin is at right now strength-wise. Like he is nowhere near where he needs to be to actually be in this universal survival arc right now. And Goku comes, kind of saves the day low-key, but when they go back to his house, he's just like, you know, I want you to spar with me. And Krillin's like, oh, you know, I gave up fighting or whatever. The Android 18 puts this dude on blast. I was like, yo, damn. It was just crazy. And I actually really loved it, but there was, there was some seriousness to it. Like, dude, like, this is, you're not the guy that I fell in love with, you know, you're low key spineless right now. And it was just dope that she addressed it to him. And then, you know, Marin on top of it saying, you know, I want a strong daddy. And I was like, damn dude, like pulling at the heartstrings right now with Krillin. I just thought it was, I thought it was dope. Like I really did. That was a really fly sequence. And you could tell like Krillin really felt it. He was like, damn, like, you know, you're right. I want to do this. I want to do this. So him and Goku fly off. Master Roshi. Now this was really cool because it, it obviously calls back to Dragon Ball. You know, they even show sequences from Dragon Ball. I just thought it was dope. This kind of throwback feel of this episode. And they even do some of the things that they did in the original one. You know, Krillin shows up with the nudie mags. Bam, can you train me? Like just how he would, how he did. It was just really funny. Now this is where shit really gets even more interesting, mainly for Krillin. So Master Roshi sets up a sparring match between Goku and Krillin. Goku's in this weird suit with these weird shoes. He's really uncomfortable you know, in the suit at the get-go, but he's Goku, so it doesn't really fucking matter. But it really, it really shows that Master Roshi's really trying to get Krillin back up. And this one part of this episode with Roshi that I was just like, that's why Master Roshi is a fucking master. This dude was watching Goku about to pummel Krillin and told him to stop. Like, he's this old, he doesn't fight, yet he's actually able to sense the movements like that. Yes, I know he's not going at full speed. However, he knew what was about to happen to Krillin and stopped it. Like, those are the things where I'm just like, that's why he's Master Roshi. Now, even more serious when they actually get to this forest when they meet fortune teller Baba. Now this kind of leads into the preview of the next episode. They go into this kind of cave on this island looking for this, you know, this herb for Master Roshi. And this is where everything kind of feels like Dragon Ball GT Loki and that one DBZ movie. I think it's Planet Eradicate the Saiyans. I think, leave me a comment if that's not the right one, but I think that's the right movie. Nevertheless, we have all the old villains in it you know, Krillin's terrified, and then when he sees Tambourine, he's like, not that guy. If you guys don't know who Tambourine is, he was the first guy to actually kill Krillin in Dragon Ball. And it's one of those moments that I feel it really shows where Krillin's at right now. Like, he hasn't been fighting. He's just being a regular guy or trying to be a regular cop. And it really shows that fear. And it's it's crazy to see him in that space because starting out with Goku, he was you know, Goku's arch rival at the very beginning. And it's just crazy to see where he's at, but he's still Goku's best friend. But it's cool that Goku's gonna help him through this and help him build his character, his fighting spirit back. And that was obviously the end of the episode, but I just felt like as a quote unquote filler episode, it just had a lot of emotional weight to it. I was like, yo, this is actually a really dope episode. And I've said it before multiple times, the slice of life episodes are not my favorite at all, not even close, but this episode was super fly. Now, this is where things get ridiculous. We have the preview for episode 76, which talks about Krillin getting his fight, uh, fighting spirit back. 
And there's also a survival arc preview. And in this, we see multiple gods of destruction, multiple angels, hand, hand, a female Broly? What? Now, I know I don't really talk about this ever, but Broly was actually one of my favorite DBZ villains in the movies. Now, before everybody freaks out and like, oh my God, well, it doesn't really make sense for canon and you know, he's supposed to be this legendary Super Saiyan and all this stuff doesn't make sense. I understand, but Dragon Ball Z has always had plot holes and it's not part of the main story. I get it. But just to have a villain that was just that crazy, I don't know, I, did, I just liked Broly. I thought he was beast. But it seems as if them kind of creating this female version of Broly, because that's what it looks like. Very timid looking, you know, character and then expands and explodes into this monstrous character. That was, just, it has to be a kind of like a nod to Broly, just kind of nod saying, you know what? You're not canon, but we're gonna, you know, add somebody that's very similar to you or could be, you know, an offshoot of that in another universe. Maybe the movies are another universe and this is another universe with a, you know, kind of quote unquote copy or a mirrored version of Broly, but this version is a female. All I know is that was one of the things that I noticed right off the bat. I was like, yo, that is crazy. But all in all, I really, really enjoyed this episode, the preview for the next episode, and the arc preview. But what did you guys think about it? I'd love to know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys like this recap, hit that thumbs up button, show your boys some love, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you're gonna wanna do that. Hit that APP logo in the corner to subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna check out my last video, link will be right here to the side. All right guys, till next time. See you later.